Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. Arrival of black ships pending. All warp null abominations, please report to the disembarkation point. This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher and Mike Hasp. What's up, guys? Yo, dog, good to be here. Hey, what's happening? So Haspel is back from Salt Lake City, Fan X. He actually won the event. He took yep. first in, in all all events. Tell us about it, Haspel. <laughs> so I swept the entire event because there wasn't a 40K tourney there. <laughs> so I can declare victory. But no, I had a good time at uh, Fan X. Ran into um, James up there. We got to hang out for a bit. Uh, met a couple other fans from the Long War. Uh, and it was it was a good a great time. I learned a lot. I was in the Bard's Tower with um, a bunch of other writers, Larry Correa and uh, Jonathan Mayberry, um, Melinda Snodgrass, and and that was like actually super cool because Melinda wrote Measure of a Man, uh, Star Trek: Next Generation. That's the episode where Data is actually put on, put on trial to find out if he's actually a person or not. Um, and it it was just fantastic being able to talk to her about all this behind the scenes Star Trek stuff. It was just really, really incredible. But I, I learned a lot. I feel like you were there for a week because I saw so many updates of you doing so many different things. It was kind of, it was kind of jelly. I was there for a while. Um, Salt Lake uh, does things a little bit differently. So instead, so they don't, their con doesn't go on Sunday. So it starts on Thursday and then runs through Saturday. So I flew in on Wednesday and I was doing stuff, uh, so many activities. <laughs> uh, so I was doing stuff from Wednesday to right when I got on the plane. I even met some guys in the airport, you know, uh, we we're still talking gaming and all kinds of nerd stuff at the airport while waiting for the flight. So it was, it was really a fantastic time. Nice, dude. Well, it was definitely cool to see all those, uh, those updates and things. Here on the East Coast, we are bracing for a big storm. Juice is actually out tonight. He is uh, doing some uh, catering for one of the emergency prep boards or teams or something. I forget uh, exactly what the quote was there. So he's he's out doing the good work before the storms actually hit us here. And, um, man, it's uh, starting to get crazy. So everybody stay safe out there if you're listening to us. Hopefully we can take your mind off things because uh, – it might get a little real here in the mid uh, mid Atlantic region over the next couple of days, going yeah. on into push back to this weekend, right? Hurricane decided it's gonna be late. Yes, yeah, it's actually been rescheduled. <laughs> nah, we'll be, we'll uh, we'll we'll deal with it in our typical East Coaster fashion, I suppose. Yeah. Well, her, here's hoping it bleeds off some energy, so when it hits you guys, it ain't Cat Four. Yeah, I mean, Sketch. there's a lot of lot of scenarios out there, a lot of stuff going on. Um, this week, actually, too, and this is this, you know, obviously, nobody ever wants to get hit by a hurricane, right? But one of the one of the biggest things I was looking forward to this weekend was the release of X Wing. Believe it or not, X Wing 2.0 comes out. So if you get a chance, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of launch party events at your local game store. So make sure you check those out. The conversion kits are coming out. There's three of those. Uh, there's Wave One of the ships. There's the starter set as well. So depending on what factions you play, you know, you might get out kind of cheap picking them up and, and getting getting dug back in. Um, but if you want one of everything, it's going to cost you like 150 bucks, depending on where you're buying it from. It's a small price to pay. Uh, the game hasn't been updated in eight years or so. I don't, I don't know if did, did I tell you, uh, Kenny Haspel, how how they're doing it now with the um, uh, the points and the equipments. No, no. That is so, not, that is not something that usually we discuss. Yeah, that's that's true. We haven't we haven't talked about this. So what they're doing is they're, they're putting out the pilot cards, which are basically like data sheets compared to 40k, right? And on the pilot cards, normally they had upgrade slots, and these upgrade slots aren't listed on their pilot cards because what they're doing is they're putting out a, a squad builder too, like they're actually putting out their army builder type app at the same time, which will contain points. 
and also the upgrades that the pilots can take. So they're kind of future proofing it in a way that all of these cards and things that you're buying right now, um, they're kind of future proofed, you know, uh, for the most part. Like I said, we hadn't seen an update in eight years. So I think it's pretty forward thinking uh, just to kind of keep the game in line and keep all the updates and stuff to um, maybe a more manageable type system because it got a little bloat. It's not like we've ever seen bloat in a game or anything before on the tabletop, but it got a little bit of bloat. And uh, I think, I think they're being very proactive with this. Now, that being said, a lot of folks are mad because, Hey, I got to spend a hundred bucks to keep playing X wing or whatever. And I understand that, (laughs) but at the end of the day, you got to vote with your hobby dollars and, you know, get in what you want to get into, I suppose. But a hundred bucks is basically free 40 K money. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, a new rule book comes out. It's usually, you know, at least $60 when a new edition drops. And then you got to get a codex. That's another, you know, 50 bucks. So I feel like X-Wing is still a deal. Yep. And I mean, you don't even have to buy all the new upgrade kits either, because depending on what you actually play, like say you don't play scum, say, hey, I only play rebels. Well, you know, maybe you want to look at you got to get to start. You got to get the new damage deck. Um then you get your rebel conversion kit and theoretically you might be okay unless there's upgrades you want in one of the other kits. So, but so know, this, is, this is a straight up new edition. Yeah. New edition has new costs. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you heard it here first. X wing. X wing is no. indeed free fact. <laughs> so, fact. <laughs> yep. That is coming out this week. Also scheduled to come out this month on the FFG side of things is the uh, the new weapon teams the e web blaster and that laser radar laser dish thing that you saw at the Battle of Hoth? Those will be coming out as uh, releases this month too. And I think they're I want to say they're twenty five dollars, but that might be a little high. I'd have to I'd have to double check that. That's just a gluten free uh, pricing right there. So uh, on to the releases this week for Games Workshop. They have or going on pre order, of course, the new night. Which, what did you guys think about this? It comes with, it's a kit that comes with everything, including the Perceptor slash Canis Rex now for the same price as the Crusader kit for 157 What do you think? This is the GW we need, not deserve. That's it. Or is it we deserve, but we, it's pretty cool when you think about it. Yeah. I think that's a good thing. It's pretty cool. A, a good, uh, kind of precedent to be had there. Um, I I definitely agree with you. So, and it's got the fully enclosed plastic cockpit, the little deuter that runs around, the little pilot, because they don't offer the Scion. Remember the Scion model from Forge World? You could get an Imperial pilot, and he was walking yeah, around. I have that guy somewhere, somewhere down here. I'm, I'm, I, I'm feel just, like, I feel like I will never find him. <laughs> Haspel, I'll help you pack if you're going to move. Let me know. It'll be like, you know, 200 years from now when archaeologists are coming and checking out stuff to see how how we wasted our money in the 21st century. They'll, they'll be like, oh, look at this little guy. You know, this is clearly some kind of idol he prayed to. <laughs> and they wouldn't be far off. Nope. A little face hugger in a jar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'd find like credit cards. And and plastic toy soldiers and like those trash plastic bubbles that float around the ocean. They'd be like, huh, these were used in conjunction somehow for worship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see what else we got. Also coming out this week are repackages of some oldies but goodies. The goat, uh, gut buster ogres, gut buster iron blasters. So the Canis Rex is 157 The Ogre box set is $40, which I think is a pretty good value. Those are the old Ogre Kingdom. Uh, I think they were called Brutes back in the day. I forget. The Iron Blasters are $33. Then you've got the Start Collecting Beast of Chaos box, which looks like a solid value with the Saigor and everything in it. Um, then they're coming out with the the new idol they have that that big waystone idol thing that they finally made a model for which i thought was pretty cool looking that's 47 dollars. then they've got their normal gores box for 24.75 
repackaging the warhounds, the old, old warhounds with the crazy like horns coming out and the, the hair, the like really solid, thick sculpt hair that's like pulling backwards as they like run. The new Beast of Chaos Battle Tome for 40. The War Scroll cards in the new style for $15. Endless spells, those are the, um, what is it? The new, uh, uh, it was like a bull and there's like some vulture looking things. They're pretty cool. Every new faction seems to be getting a endless spell pack for 35 and the dice, they got dice coming out too for $20. Those are the big ones for going on pre-order next week. And after that, it's anybody's guess. Because there isn't much on deck. Although it does look like that Night Vault. Did you see the preview of the Night Vault today, Haspel? I did not see the preview today. But I've, well, I've been keeping abreast of the Night Vault stuff. Definitely. It was uh, somebody had it set up on a table. And took some pictures. I guess they were doing a demo at their store or something. Oh, um, got some pretty good pictures of it. They posted them up on Twitter. Uh, it looks it looks solid. Yeah, I, I guess like there's to gonna be like a new stat line of magic or something. Mm-hmm. But and then the other thing that I've heard, which actually kind of makes sense, this is rumor that uh, they are not once Night Vault drops, they will no longer be producing Shade Spire. So. Uh, so I almost said Ultima Underworlds. (laughs) So a Warhammer Underworlds starter will be Night Vault. Like there won't be a Shade Spire anymore. It'll be, everything will be Night Vault. But they're compatible though. That's what they are compatible. They are compatible. You can totally use your Shade Spire stuff in Night Vault. Um, but, and this is a rumor, I don't know that it's true, but that you should be able to buy the war bands still for Shade Spire, but that the starter for Shade Spire will no longer be in production. So, um, it sounds like they're going kind of like the, uh, Magic the Gathering route. Where well, once, just, yeah, once the this. next season comes out, that's, that's the, that's the game now, you know? Um, you actually predicted this on this podcast. You're like, yeah. you know what? It's not called Shade Spire. It's actually called Warhammer Underworlds. Yeah. So, um, I, I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I hope that things have led up for me so that when it drops, I don't know when they haven't announced a date, right, or anything. No, but re- uh, I think it's coming soon because they've showed a lot of pictures of it, and generally that's about a one month time frame. And remember, Shade Spire came out a year ago next month. Mm, but so, do they want to take away the focus from October? Yeah, they, they've got enough stuff in the shoot. I mean, look at it this way. This is my personal opinion. Games Workshop really has to keep up their 55 mile an hour release schedule because if they slow down the bus at all, there's so much stuff out there. There's so many other things from so many other different companies, including Kickstarters and things. Some of it of their own licensing, like they could really lose a step if they. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. I, w- I was banking that it would come out in November, but I have no basis for that. That's just me throwing a dart, you know, at a wall and just going November, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't really know anything. So I think if I recall correctly, in the immediate future, they said uh, Speed Freaks would come out ahead of the initial Orc release. So they get that bump from the box um, and then we'll get an Orc release. And then there's actually lots more stuff on deck, believe it or not. There's there's a ton of stuff. And here I'm gonna since since your your prophecy came true, I'm gonna I'm gonna make another wild prophecy because I kind of said that we wouldn't see we wouldn't see new editions of the game. We would see second editions of games, and it turns out that that was kind of true when it came to Age of Sigmar because it's Age of Sigmar 2.0, and now we're hearing that there's going to be another Space Marine decks second edition. Why? Well, yeah, version version two. Version right. Like, like what? Yeah. Cause that's, you know, that's, you have to collect all the stuff and you have to revamp it and you have to put it back out and you got to keep, you got to keep that 55 mile bus, an hour bus going. Right. So what I think is kind of seeing the previews from the new beast of chaos book is they are, they are taking and tying factions together. Like, like almost like the beast of chaos book is a soup list for age of Sigmar. 
but they're doing it in a way that the things only work with the other things and they're being very specific about it. So in theory, oh my God, I'm so stoked behind that. Cause then, cause look, I get, I do get a little, it's, it's clear in my tone of my voice. I get a little irritated with all this soup talk. Right. Um, when I'm like, this is just detachment 40 K. Like what we don't have to like create a derogatory term just to, you know, explain a element of the game that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. Um, what, th don't play the game at, at tournaments if you if you don't like detachments, right? What remember the old days though? Like these books would all be like like I want an imperial codex. Like now what? Now what if I have an imperial codex that gives you access to everything in there? It's in one book. Uh, it says in there gives you rules on how to create detachments in there that echo the main rule book. And they use keywords and it shows you how to make these battalions in such a way that is not soup, but it has all the rules in the same book. And now what are you going to say? Right. Well, and what if also they release these books for match play? Like what if it's like space Marines match play edition volume one? I mean, it's another piece of literature they can sell us. So that kind of like lines up with the, with the that's a dangerous model. precedent though, because then, it, then they start alienating uh, their, their customer base. I don't know. It could happen. We've seen stranger things happen. I think we all can agree. Um, Hassel, you got some. Uh, you got some games. The the board yeah, game yeah. beat. Yeah. So one of the things I got to see in person this week was the cool mini or not Game of Thrones game, and I got to say, I, I you know I didn't see it played or anything. I just saw saw it at the at the Haven. And it, the miniatures were extremely high quality um, to the point that I'm like, you know, I would buy that game just for the miniatures. Uh, I wouldn't it, if I didn't play it at all, I'd be OK with that because these these minis you can use for D&D, &D, you can use for a ton of other stuff. But the miniatures were such high quality and they were they were plastic. Um I thought that it was a fantasy flight game until I looked at the box and saw it was cool mini or not. They, they were on that level of quality. So they were really fantastic. And then I went down to Barnes and Noble this week and I bought all three of the new kind of games workshop tie in games that they're selling, not at the uh, local friendly local game store. They're selling them at Barnes and Noble. And I guess maybe some big box stores. But uh, they, yeah, they indicated it. there was a, a little list of them, some of them all over the place. Yeah, but they Barnes and Noble definitely had them. And there's three games. There's Lord of the Rings Quest to uh, Mount Doom. There's Blitz Bowl. And then there's Space Marine Adventures. And the Lord of the Rings Quest to Mount Doom comes with the Fellowship of the Ring miniatures. These are reprints from the Battle for Moria box set that had come out you know years ago and it is uh, a pretty proper board game from the look of it but what's interesting too about all these games is that they're eight year olds and up uh so they're targeting the a, a different audience with these they're targeting my guess is that they're targeting the the kids of existing players you know, so it's like parents want to play 40K, want to play Blood Bowl, want to play Lord of the Rings with their children, but the game's still a little bit too complex. Well, now you can, you know, uh, by rolling these rule sets out and everything. Blitz Bowl is kind of a, a faster toned down version of Blood Bowl. You get two teams, you get a reversible pitch, you get all kinds of special dice. It's It looks really great. Uh, I can't wait to give it a try. And then there's Space Marine Adventures, which comes with reprints from the Japanese Space Marine heroes, but they are actually mm -hmm. cast in, in their own chapter colors. So the Salamander is blue. The Space Wolf is actually, or not Salamander is blue. Jeez. Salamander is green. Uh, Ultramarine's blue. The Space Wolf is actually cast in Space Wolf blue. You know, that kind of baby blue, sky blue color. Um, they have, because they couldn't, you know, we don't have snap fit Necron warriors or Necrons at all. They gave you uh, a bunch of uh, like little chits to represent the Necrons. 
and they come in like you know there's warriors there's immortals there's there's uh some lords there's even an overlord i think and uh what ex- what's exciting about that is is it's co-op it's one to four players uh cooperative play so that means that when you're trying to introduce somebody new to the game especially you know a kid or something it doesn't have to be an adversarial experience it you know you're you choose your space marine hero and then you're playing against the board and i love games like that and one of my favorite games ever is fantasy flights elder sign because i can play it alone um i also adored assassin Orum. i still play assassin Orum because it's it's hard and you can play it alone you know and and uh so i'm looking forward to playing uh space marine adventures but all three of these the uh the Lord of the Rings one is the most expensive. It's about 50 bucks. The other ones are about 40 bucks. Uh, every single one of them I felt was a, a good product. You know, the, as far as quality goes and anything, can't speak to the rules until I, I play them. But uh, they look to be quality products, serious, not really over So it's, it's Prou- pretty neat. Proud to add them to your plastic pyramid of shame. Yes. And uh, one additional thing I would say is you can order them online from Barnes and Noble online. But if you do have a Barnes and Noble brick and mortar store near you, I would advocate going down to the actual brick and mortar store and purchasing them there. Uh, Just, you know, that reinforces the whole, hey, we appreciate you guys doing this kind of thing. And um you know, we're, we're going to support it by coming into your store and spending some bucks. Now it does carry a little bit of a stigma because it is not available at friendly local game stores. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure why they did that because any one of these games would have sold at a friendly local game store. Uh, I feel, you know, not a problem. Plus it introduces the player base to, Hey, here's where you can get more stuff, you know? And, and kind of reinforces those, um, you know, where do you get more stuff? Well, you can't, if you want to, if you like the Space Marine game or you like the Lord of the Rings miniatures and you want to buy more Lord of the Rings miniatures, you're not buying them at the Barnes and Noble or a big box store. So probably, I'm probably it's probably a licensing deal. It right. probably is. Right. Another deal with GW probably was just like the terms of their contract. It, yeah. Barnes and Noble's honestly, like, Barnes and Noble can help. Yeah. So yeah, they need help. So they're like, nope, we're not going to carry this shit. If like they could just go to the hobby store, we want we want to expand the market. And also simultaneously, like there might be a market, an untapped market that frequents Barnes and Nobles over game stores. So it might work for both communities. You know, might be a crossover opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and and honestly, these games are meant for a more casual board gamer crowd. I mean, these are not these are not hardcore. You know, this isn't Twilight Imperium. This is, these are not hardcore board games. They're, they look, you know, pretty fast, pretty fun. Um, they're not meant to, to break your head playing these. That adds up. Is, uh, does that cover uh, the first half of the show, Rob? Uh, yeah, I think so, for the most part. So we definitely have some new rules, not clickbait, to break not down clickbait. here in a few minutes. Um, uh, lots of new models, lots of exciting things, but let's take a quick commercial break. Let's hear from our hobby sponsors, and then uh, let's jump into it. Jello, Jello shots. Finally, the Long War Swag is here. Longwarswag.com, the official home of Long War merchandise. We've got a range of merchandise exclusive to the Long War brand, next level painting, and spiky bits. Definitely log in today while supplies last. Dear veterans, quickly, make your way to thelongwar.net and find out how to reap your hard-earned spoils of this long war. For our allies at secretweaponsminiatures.com have rewarded us all with an extra 10% discount on all Secret Weapon Miniatures merchandise. So stock up, dear veterans, and enjoy. Elrixhobbies.com is your exclusive portal to upgrading your hobby. When you sign up at thelongwar.net, you gain an instant promotional discount, good for 10% off at Elric's Hobbies. Elric's Hobbies.com. 
veterans, I've got news for you. Get your best deals online at dicehead.com. Long War Vets, call or email for your best vet deals. That's dicehead.com. Rob, what happened? <laughs> we got we got new 40Ks. It's been a scratchy month, but we got some new we got some new stuff. Some solid concrete new stuff. We actually got new rules in the tooth and claw box for gene stealer colts, but we'll probably talk about those uh a different time. They updated some of the some of the stuff. Pretty interesting. So we've got uh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven new units. Hey, how about that? Seven new Nurgle units. Hmm. In uh, the Rogue Trader box, they all have points. They all have, there's actually eight new stratagems for them specifically as well. Rob, can, this- can you tell me what the name of these guys are? I want you to do it like you did it earlier. So then I have mm-hmm. to ask Haspel how to explain it to me in a way I would understand. Oh, about like the backstory? <laughs> yeah, because it was priceless. So the uh, the Jello field, the thing that protects the ships as they travel through the warp so that the, the demons don't come in has been infected somehow, I guess by a demon, by a demon, which I'm not even sure what that's about. And they mutated some of the, the crew to the point that they literally put their heads on the jello generator and got jello heads. And now they're walking around the, the and ship. Now, and now they also are demons. Now do you guys ever watch mm-hmm. like Keenan appeal? Like where it's like, the angry guy who translates for President Obama. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you can you do me something like that? Like explain this to me, Haspel, in terms of uh, narrative <laughs> and maybe even cinema that I would understand. Okay, yeah. So the narrative is that when you travel into the warp, uh, all the bad things in the warp can just like come into your ship. They care not for walls. They can do whatever they want. So the Geller field is an energy field that surrounds the ship and keeps the warp out. And the perfect, the most perfect example I can think of, of what a Geller field failure or going into the warp without a Geller field is the movie Event Horizon, which it frightens me to say is probably like 20 years old now. I don't even want to look, but, but, uh, do not watch it. It does not hold up. It doesn't hold up. No. Oh, I'm a little sad to hear about that, but I haven't seen it in a long time, but, uh, it has a very young that, Lawrence Fishburne in it. Yeah. And like Sam Neill and, and a couple other pretty good stars, but, uh, but there's a, there's a good solid theory out there that event horizon is actually a Warhammer 40 K film. And w- what it's about is about a ship called the event horizon that is trying out a new type of drive that is going to go faster than light. And they go ahead and engage the drive and they're not heard from again. I don't remember how many years go by, like 20 or 30 years go by. And then event horizon shows back up, um, just pops back into real space. And so they send some investigators on the ship to find out what is going on. And the ship it's, it's your standard haunted house movie, but it's on a spaceship. So it has sci-fi elements. Um, but the, that they're on the ship and, and essentially that's what happened is the ship went into the warp and came back possessed. That's the easiest way to put it because they did not have a Geller field or as Rob says, a jello field, <laughs> which is much more fun to say. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. So we'll go with jello for the rest of the show. So <laughs> it seems to me like event horizon is like what happens after this game. This is the road trader stuff. Yeah. So like, so right, right Event, now they're fighting it out. Yeah. Event Horizon, we're like investigating the ship, like after all this went down, and you're just looking at the videotapes and like the ghosts of all these people and shit. And it's like, this is kind of fucked up. And it seems like you're playing through the events. The scariest part of Event Horizon was when like they activated the console and you can see a quick little video of the bridge crew. Do you remember that, Aspel? Yeah. It's like yeah, a we're, eight second clip of like the bridge crew like ripping their own innards out through their mouths. Yeah, like, and he's like screaming in Latin, Liberate te de ex infernis or some, some crap like that. <laughs> yeah. So now that I understand the premise and the narrative of this game, and it's flawless, there's no plot holes. Uh, obviously, mm, none. the device that you use to keep demons out was possessed by demons. I feel like. But like we 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 talk like 
Is she sure it wasn't like a cult uprising and someone sabotaged the, the machine spirit to worship chaos? I don't know. Whatever, man. I don't write narratives. Got it. I'm sold. What, what What's going on here? So we got new rules. There's bad guys and good guys. They're fighting it out. Uh, the bad guys all have Nurgle keyword and stuff. So uh, they have a variety of special rules that you might be familiar with. You know, like uh, uh, Disgusting Resilience. They all have a new uh, retinue feature where if you take the, the leader guy, you can set all of them up as one choice, kind of like they're in a rhino, but they're not in a rhino, as one choice towards, you know, your I get to go roll the dice to see who goes first thing. It's called deployment. Yeah, deployment. When you mustered your army. <laughs> then, uh, so there's seven new units. We can just run through the, uh, the stratagems first so you get an idea of. Run me through the units first because we didn't. Oh, I, you want the units? I want the units. So, Because a lot of these stratagems are going to be key to units. Gotcha. So let's start. So we got the uh, the leader guy, Volgar the Thrice Cursed. He's a uh, five-inch movement. Weapon skill three, ballistic skill six, toughness five, strength five, five wounds, four attacks, uh, six up save with disgusting and re resilient. Reroll hit rolls of one for friendly jello pox infected units within six. Go figure. He also has a five up invul and neg one leadership to anybody that's around him that are the enemy. A lot of these things are really low points cost, too, and we'll talk about that here in a second. He's got a belly flamer, <laughs> assault D6, strength four, automatically hits, obviously, and flesh ripper claws, uh, strength six, neg two, two damage. So kind of okay, I guess. You said with five attacks? Yeah. This is not bad. He's standard reroll guy, uh, has some teeth mm -hmm. in close combat, has a shooting element. Has enough wounds and disgusting resilience. Yeah, it's not bad. He's uh, 65 points. Yeah, not bad. The box samplers are just duders with one wound, strength four, toughness four, hits on fours, cross the board, six up save, five up invulnerable, or excuse me, dis disgusting resilience. Oh, and they do have a five up invulnerable, and each time you roll a six, they deflect the wound back. And do a mortal wound, or they just do a mortal wound at the uh, the unit that attacked them, so they kind of deflect it. Then they got these little dudes that look like Nurglings. They're called Glitchlings. Um, similar Nurgle stats: strength two, toughness two, one wound, two attacks. They can't infiltrate. They have disgustingly resilient. They have a five up invul. They're disgustingly resilient. They cannot, cannot infiltrate. No, they cannot. One wound per, they're not based, they're not swarms, they're just like one wound little dude. Yeah, they're just little duders. I guess they're more, yeah. And they have the I like squi they have the squishy rules, so like they're disgusting. Yeah, they're squishy. Does not work against multiple damage weapons. Yep. Um, and but they're neg one to hit from ranged combat, ranged weapons. So that's kind of something they got going for them. And then they got the big brutes called the hole breakers, just strength five, tons five, four attacks. Uh, three attacks on one of them and uh, four wounds, six up save, disgustingly resilient. They subtract bank one to leadership. And, the, and these the are all demons, units. so they all have demons invulnerable? Yeah. Uh, demon keywords? These are not demon, actually. These guys here. The hull breakers are not demon. The how, how many points are those glitchlings, though? They're pretty cheap. I want to say they're like four points each. Hmm. They are four points each. You take them in a squad of four. They also have a cool stratagem, too, for vehicles. The hull breakers are not demonic. Uh, so they just have their five up. Feel no pain, six up. Strength of user attacks at neg two, two damage. So pretty much it. Just duders. And these are all like small squad size for some reason, right? Because it's really yeah, squads, squads of three. Mm -hmm. Well, probably because it's kill team, kill team. Yeah, yeah, yep. I mean, I like their rules. I don't like this four man squad shit or three man squad. And shit. then there's the little the little fleas and stuff too. They're all four man squads. They're about four points each. I think one of them's three points. They don't have any ridiculous uh, rules, really. 
they just don't take up a spot in a detachment if they have Volgar the Thrice Cursed. Um, one of them you add back a uh, model to the unit every turn. And they're neg one to hit the little eye yeah. stinger swarms. Rules seem very suited to kill team uh, so far. Mm -hmm. But these, I mean, but that means therefore it is a 40k rule set, a legal 40k rule set. Yeah, I mean, you can take these, you can take them in an attachment. You've got troops, you've got fast attacks. Um, now, if you do take them and you make uh, Volgar the Thrice Cursed your HQ, he gets the Warlord trait where you get three additional command points, but you can only use that to, on Jellerpox infected stratagems. So his Warlord trait gives you three bonus CPs that can only mm -hmm. be used on their stratagems. Only, yep. Okay, so that's cool. I mean, it gives you a free, it gives you free stratagems. I like that. Yeah, we have a question in the chat too. Um, so when you field this, can you expand out from what's inside the box? Or does it behave like a war scroll type battalion? Like where it's a set. It, it, it seems like a war scroll because there's no other, like their keyword is uh, jello pox yep. and chaos. Chaos and jello pox. So therefore, you can't use chaos currently to make an attachment as your keyword. Mm -hmm. So they would, it's, so it's only these units can be the detachment. So, yeah, but they're not restricted like the uh, the Star Striders are actually restricted to you can only take one squad like this in a detachment where these guys aren't. So there's that. Let's uh, let's run down okay, so some real. basic rules and they're relatively cheap, but yep. uh, the stratagem is good. So we've got the uh, infestation stratagem. One CP uses at the end of your movement phase. Choose a vermin. Uh, unit from your army that has been destroyed set this up anywhere wholly within 12 of a friendly jello pox unit but more than nine from enemy model so like you were saying you're gonna have to spend reserve points it doesn't i like it it's that. one cp though right so like it's one cp mm -hmm. so you can spam the little glitch mob dudes mm -hmm. and you can save a bunch for reinforcement points and they're killing these units and they're just getting a free redeploy like a free demonic sum it's literally demonic ritual rules like 12 inches from a d another unit nine from a d uh, so like it's like actually a pretty like if you're like i need to be over here suddenly you're like you're over there you know what i mean yeah so it, it's a it's a useful rule the uh glitch leans those are the little nurgling kind of dudes i guess they're more like the uh the little burning flames from zinch uh, once yeah, they, have they, fought they the seem fight. like brimstone horror point costs yeah. uh, super yeah, easy to kill, but they get just a fake disgusting resilience. And they're demon, you said? They are demon. So they have a five up and vulnerable instead of a six. Yes, they have a five up. Because that's the brimstone horror rule. Uh, these guys, whenever the glitchlings fight in the fight phase, choose an enemy vehicle within one and roll a D6 for each model in your unit on a four, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound, but you can only have four in the squad. So maybe okay for one CP situational. Uh, it'd be really dope if they were bigger, if you could have a 10 man squad. <laughs> yep. Super dope. Fire demise. Uh, whenever Volgar, the thrice curse is slain before removing him, roll a D six for each unit within six on a four up. That unit suffers a mortal wound for one CP. They're actually all one CP. Then there's Jello Shift. Use this stratagem before you move the Vox Shamblers in the movement phase. Instead of moving, they, it can make a Jello Shift. Remove this unit from the battlefield. Then at the end of the movement phase, set it up anywhere that is more than nine from any enemy models. That's a solid rule. Yep. You just poof over here. Uh, Corruption and Decay. Use the stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Choose an enemy unit within three of an infected unit until the end of the phase, add one to all wound rolls made for jello pox infected models from your army when they target this enemy unit. Oh, it's like doom, like a, like a veterans mm -hmm. of the long war doom. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really good. Um, okay. It's really good. These, I mean, that's really good in conjunction with a couple of these units, like some of the weaker units, eh. but like anytime you have like a, you put the curse on a unit and it makes other units have a better room roll. It's funny. Cause me and Sean Naden were just talking about the difference between um, 
like veterans of the long war and doom, right? Like you like how they're both of similar power. Like, so re-rolling wounds is really good, but plus one to wound is really good too, especially if there's other things that trigger. Like when you roll a certain number, like if you roll a six, you know, like, Mm. so this is a really good curse that combines some of my favorite rules of 40k that's really strong and if you in with knowing that that stratagems exist i would try to build this detachment around that stratagem yeah it's it's pretty solid the next one insane gibberings uses start of the enemy psychic phase until the end of the phase subtract the one from psychic test for any enemy psyker while they are within 18 of volgar the thrice cursed so that's a really strong one that's a it's 18 inches, so kind of limited, but that dude can, sh- can. I think that dude has the right keywords to jello shift. So uh, he cannot jello shift. What unit can jello shift? The Vox Shamblers. Oh, Vox Shamblers. 18 inches, one CP, minus one to cast. That's, I mean, that's fucking, you're going to catch me using that. Yeah. Espe- especially when you consider Kill Team is smaller. You know what I mean? Playing mm-hmm. on a smaller field, 18 inches, that's serious. Uh, Rance and Vomit use a stratagem during your shooting phase. Choose a hole breakers model from your army, then choose an enemy unit within six that is visible. Roll three D6s for each roll of five. That enemy suffers a mortal wound. So they have several ways to do mortal wounds in one turn. But they're different units. Yeah, they're different stratagems. So like, yep, it's interesting. Like a lot of stratagem, a lot of stratagem based motor wounds. And the last stratagem is at the end of your movement phase, choose a hole breakers model from your army. That model regains one loss wound. One loss wound. So there's not. So the 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 hole breakers being like the tougher unit, they don't get the jello shift. Mm-hmm. They do benefit from the re- the plus one to wound curse. Yep. They have a I see you do a potentially some mortal wounds to you. Yes. So these seem this, like six. I don't know a lot about kill team, but I feel like that's pretty good for this is all pretty good for kill team. No, no, this is forty k. Oh, this is this is the this forty k and forty k rules and road trader game rules. No, this is this is forty k. This is just for forty k. These there's are no just other, the 40 there's no other use for these rules. Nope. Ugh. Yeah, that kind of I don't know. That changes my opinion. I thought these were the kill team rules, but these are 40k. Interesting. This really small squad size. So like basically. Man. Like, okay, they, there's play here. Like, there's play here. So a small detachment. We can make a really cheap Italian, first off. Right. Yeah. Without so you can make an incredibly cheap. So there's two HQ options, right? Um, no, just one. Can't make a battalion. So this is not a battalion. Can't be done. So you can make a patrol detachment or you can make a lot of things. Okay, so you can make anything, but so you're not gonna get like the sweet five free CPs. That sucks balls. Okay. I already harder for me to sell this. Um <laughs> I like that you can get a bunch of really cheap scoring units. You can get unit. You can do a bunch of demonic ritual shenanigans. Um, I like that you can jello shift. And what's the unit that you can jello shift? What's its what's its old bag? Uh, Vox shamblers. What do they do? What, give me their stats again. They're just duders. They had they had on fours, strength four, toughness four, one wound, two attacks. Um, Four guys, three guys, three guys. They they have a five up invul, and if you make it on a six, they do one mortal wound in a fight phase back. Five up, five up, one wound. They can teleport somewhere for one CP. Yep. Um, and the units that can come back to life are the glitchlings. Not these guys. Uh, no, I think that is the. Is it the glitchlings? No, I think it was the vermins. The uh, the eye stinger swarms, curse mites, or sludge grubs. 
sludge grubs. And what are these things? They're like the fleas or the flies or the little larvae. Um, they're not that. They're like three or four points each. They're pretty much brimstone horror stats without a invulnerable. And they have a six up. And so, okay, so uh, so I'm thinking ITC, right? Like, that's what I play out here. So I'm like, okay, so there's some play here. You can move a unit over, grab an objective, do something kind of cool, get a get some recon points. Uh, units are dying, they're coming back to life, but it's like, it's going to be really hard to have it attached with these guys and not lose the who killed more primary objective every turn. Because in ITC, it's you got to kill something, hold something every turn, player turn. Game cycle, mm-hmm. who killed more, who held more. These guys... This this detachment makes it very difficult for you to be the guy who killed more every turn. Like you're going to be perpetually sacrificing hold more for kill more. Therefore, it's a wash. Like yeah, eh. this is really. I mean, I like the stratagems, but like the rules for these units. I mean, maybe there's some sort of combo with the keyword Nurgle. Do they have keyword Nurgle? They have keyword Nurgle. Like pretty much everything. So, if so you, by going going from the FAQ, you can't have the only, you can't have it be chaos. Be your right. Keyword, your keyword. You would have to take them in the jar pox and infect infected infected uh, detachment. But if you had Nurgle in your other detachment, and they gave Nurgle gave Nurgle some sort of buffs, those um, things usually. So there, I mean, there are definitely things that are going to affect them. There's definitely Nurgle is a key word. There's going to be some play there for sure, like, um, for sure. But it's like, damn, these units are just so small and weak, and yeah, you can like you can't even like. I'm like, oh well, I can get like the world's cheapest battalion. That's awesome. No, no, you can't even get a battalion. If you, you have t- one HQ in this one. If you take them in any detachment, like they have, so they have the Nurgle keyword. Mm-hmm. If you take them, you, I mean, you can't take them in a detachment. That's the thing is like, um, like Death Guard, like I saw that in chat. So like Death Guard have Death Guard keyword and Heretic as a starter's keyword. Um, and Nurgle keyword. Not as faction. They don't have Nurgle as faction. But they're, but they're, their legion is death guard. So you pro I think you technically can bypass it and use Nurgle. Right. But you would lose every legion benefit. Mm-hmm. I, th- I believe is correct. Like there's, I can't I, like, unless they keep giving us more units, like this does not seem good. Like they, they literally just released this and it's like, these are the rules for 40 K. Well, you know, one of the folks in the chat saying one night stands was saying that it's like um or Longship Loft said that it's like they gave Shadespire AOS all the Shadespire warbands have AOS rules. You know, so that mm-hmm. you can use them in AOS, but it's not really it's not that good. Yeah. It's like you can field them if you want to because you you spent time assembling and painting those minis. It could so, be a, a- then in a lot of cases, this this is just a triple dip for y'all to buy it. You know, like um, we saw with Necromunda, it was priced similarly. And it came with the the point of Necromunda was, yeah, you got two warbands right off the bat. And that was neat. But really, it was you got the board, you got the, the little bulkheads and stuff that came in it. And you got the rules for Necromunda. So now you're getting rules for these warbands in Kill Team. You're getting Kill Team cards. You're getting these new war bands themselves, which are exclusive to this box. Yeah. It just you know, seems like it's just a bonus. They're like, Hey, added, ba- added value. It's also legal for 40 K. Yeah. Yeah. It's that, that's what I feel. I mean, yeah. these are meant to be kill team, but you can also play them in 40 K. Yeah. They're, every, all the rules are just wrong. Like squad sizes are all wrong. Um, I heard it in chat. Harvey Ballstein was like, could you, could you just distract people with these? Yeah. But like, most major events are playing like something yeah. like ITC, right? It's going to be hurting you. And know? ITC be- is a very balanced format that rewards you for killing and holding objectives. These guys are going to be pretty good at holding objectives for a little while, but like there's no board control with only four men in a squad. So like you kill four guys, you're not holding the objective anymore, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, you get killed really easy, so you're giving up fucking all sorts of points every turn. It's just, and they're not giving you any kind of like command point benefits. They have some pretty cool stratagems, but like there's just no ass behind any of the units. I think the models are, are the models are pretty cool. Rob? Yeah, models yeah, are good. The models are good. The so, models are great. So you're buying cool models, man, like that you might be able to convert, mm-hmm. do some kit bashing, but like I'd have to think about it. There might be some play with the Nurgle tree because I think that's Nurgle demon. Mm-hmm. And if these guys have the Nurgle and demon keyword, it's not, and the tree is not faction keyed. Stratagems are faction keyed in the demon codex. The tree actually extends to things like Nurgle obliterator still. So like there might be some cover save abuse and some like fallback and still charge abuse like uh, for four man squads that have no ass. And then the one squad I wanted to be demon keyword, you told me it's not demon. Right. Yeah. The hole breakers are not demons. So thumbs down for these being any being even remotely. Ca- they're not even casual rules. <laughs> no, they don't. I mean, just talking it out. I don't I don't see the benefit. You want to go over the uh, the Star Striders, the Imperium Duders? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. All right. So they have the same the same deal, the same warlord trait. If you take the uh, Alicia Vane, Alicia Vane, whatever her name is. As your warlord, then you get the three extra command points that you can only use on the Star Striders. Okay, fine. Then you've got uh, the Rogue Trader herself. She is uh, three ups to hit. Strength three, of course. Toughness three, four wounds, three attacks. She's got an heirloom pistol. Strength four, neg two, two damage. Solid. Uh, Monomolecular cane rapier. Say that ten times fast. Strength of user, neg four, neg four, one damage. Rob, I just want you to say, you said, say it 10 times fast. No, you can't say anything 10 times fast. I can barely talk as it is. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, she also has, now this is a new one. Have we seen concussion grenade? Because this is kind of neat. It's a six inch toss grenade D3. Strength three, one damage. But if the target's within one of a terrain feature, add one to this weapon strength and damage. So it goes up to four, two. Uh, that rule seems like overhandling. It's, a, it's interesting. <laughs> nice. Uh, I have not seen that particular rule, but it seems like a lot of words just say that sometimes this grenade sucks really bad and sometimes this is really average. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, she has a concealed archaeotech weapon, which is her... Uh, Monkey ring. She's got a Jakaro ring. Once per battle, at start of the fight phase, pick an enemy model within one, roll a die on a four up. It suffers D3 mortal wounds. Pew pew. She's got a four up invulnerable save, and all um, Star Strider units within six reroll hit rolls a one. So she kind of does all those things. I think she's 65 points. Let me double check. She is 45 points. And she is legit the ro- the actual rogue trader, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. Yep. So she's forty five. Not too bad. She's HQ. I feel though. like I might pick up this box just to, I don't know, just to make some RPG guys for the new RPG that'll drop whenever it drops. Oh, Wrath and Glory. Yeah. Yeah. I think you they- mean Wrath and Glory, the new pen and paper RPG uh, licensed by Forty K? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah, that might be sick for them. Yeah, I mean, I like her rules, honestly. I like her little pistol. I like her little mortal wound attack. Like, she's only 45 points. I'm, I can get behind her. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you've got the Void Master Squad. They are basically guards, veteran guardsmen, weapon skill four, or ballistic skill three, strength three, toughness three, one attack. They got the doggy in there. Well, uh, keywords, Imperium. No. Keyword Imperium and Elucidin Star Striders or whatever that word is. Okay, so similar situation. Got it. So he has an Artificer Shotgun, the squad leader, Assault 2, Strength 4, 2 damage, plus 1 strength if at half range. Then you got the Roto Cannon, which is 24-inch, Heavy 4, Strength 4, Neg 1, 2 damage, another Concussion Grenade. Um, some special rules that kind of just don't matter to even talk about. 
I love it. It's like, oh god, I'm tired of reading uh, this crap. I'm not. I'm not going to talk. About that. Uh, they still they have the Rogue Trader retinue rules, so you can you, if you if you take the Rogue Trader and you take them, you set them all up as one. Boop. Just skip ahead of the stratagems, like the Inquisition. Yeah. No, no, we got more. There's a little. There's a little tech dude in here. Uh, he is strength four, ballistic skill four. Toughness three, two attacks. He I has saw a, you get bored reading that. It's just. Like, <laughs> I, you, I mean, I'm I trying saw you here, like, but, I'm gonna do this, and I just saw your face. Like you're just like, oh god, what? It's the worst. Um, he's got a pistol at strength five, unmodified hit of roll of six for this attack. Scores Mortal three wound, hits. I guess. Oh, three hits. Oh, so he's got a yeah. Tesla pistol. Yeah, he's got a Tesla pistol. Kind of cool. I'm back into it. Okay, let's go. How many? That, that's literally it. <laughs> he's stubbed this three, two attacks, two two wounds. Oh, he actually gives a five up a marble save to all the duders wholly within six. Okay. Oh. Kind of kind of neat. These guys tend to be OP compared to the other dudes. Yeah, five up a marble save bubble is uh these you don't guys see that very often. these guys are good at fighting each other. So definitely I can see myself saying, Haspel, you ready to do this? Fucking grab your stupid Star Strider people and I'll grab my Jello people and we make a big old patrol detachment and fight each other. <laughs> How many oh, points? 2,000? No, way too many fucking points. Uh, no, 375 points. <laughs> Might be too many points. There's a little medic uh, rejuvenant adept. That is basic human stats with two wounds for some reason. Uh, at the end of your movement phase, this model can attempt to heal a single friendly Star Strider infantry within three on a four up a unit. A one model regains a lost wound. If it's the Void Master Squad, you res- you get back one of the. Models that were slain earlier in the battle. And, well, did the leader have a warlord trait like the other dude? Yeah, you get the three command points. That you those bonus three only used on their stratagems. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah cool. All right, this is it. This is gonna, this has gotta be it. This is the assassin. Let's see. What, let's see what she does. So weapon skill three, ballistic skill four, strength four, toughness three, two attacks, two two wounds, four attacks. Has a dart mask. It's a pistol one. Strength of one, neg one AP. What? Oh, it always wounds on a two unless the target is Titanic or vehicle. Okay, that makes more sense. Death Cult Power Blade, strength of user, neg two, one damage. Eh, strength four, that's not bad. Concussion Grenade, five up, one vulnerable. Zealot, you can reroll failed hit rolls in a turn in which it charged. Made a heroic invention, which charged by an enemy unit. Okay. 25 points. Not bad for 25 points. Yeah. I've, I've already scaled my expectations to these guys versus the other guys. I'm back in it. I'm like, yeah, I'll fuck something over her. As long as it's a bunch of one wound, four, one wound, two, two toughness, two models. Yeah, I think. Uh, I just want to throw in here that Star Striders and the Jello people is a great name for a band. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like that would be a good time. Where are you going? Oh, I'm gonna go see Star Striders and Jello people. You're probably gonna get messed up. <laughs> so there's a there's a stratagem that allows you uh to shoot with the shotgun, make a single hit roll, but add three to the roll if it hits, suffer uh target suffers one mortal wound instead of normal damage. There is a stratagem also after you attack with a rogue trader you get one additional attack if the attack hits the enemy suffers d3 mortal wounds instead of the normal damage damn how are these people just generating so many mortal wounds like my shotgun does mortal wounds my sword does mortal wounds it's like i mean i like it but it's like damn must be all the war uh, energy there's a cp play a stratagem at the end of your turn if that little tech priest dude is within three of an objective until the start of your next turn add one to saving materials for him and increase his attacks by one the assassin before the fight phase until the end of phase damage characteristic of power blades is increased to d3 when targeting infantry so yeah, she's designed to kill those little glitch mobs 
because yep. they, they don't get feel no pain against that shit. Uh, I feel like Glitch Mob is a good name for. Oh, it is the name of a band. <laughs> it's, it, uh, it is. You get a second attempt to try to heal somebody with the medic, uh, the uh, tech priest. Oh, the tech priest can disappear and reappear anywhere in the on the battlefield, more than nine inches away from any models. For one CP, you can identify mysterious objectives. And ignore penalties to hit. I'm so glad one of the stratagems is <clears throat> that. <laughs> With the tech priest. And then last but certainly not least, however you want to look at it, personal teleportarium chamber. The stratagem used during deployment set up all your star strider units from your army in a teleportarium chamber instead of placing them on a battlefield at the end of any of your movement phases. They teleport into battle, set them up anywhere on the battlefield that's more than nine inches away from anyone. So that's impossible to play unless you have uh, another detachment. Yep. Because yeah. you lose the game. No boots on the ground. So you can only play that because they're Imperium and Star Strider. So you can only play that if you're playing open 40k. I, yes. I'm, not, I'm super confused. No, you can you can take them Star Strider faction. So you have to take, but it didn't that you have thing, to take did, a star strider detachment. But didn't that thing say you play this and all your dudes? What did it say? All your star strider dudes. So, so who doesn't have star strider keyword in that whole? They all have star strider. So like, it doesn't say like any amount up to max. It says all of them, right? He did say all of them. So you can take a patrol of these guys, but in a battle forged army, you have yep, to, you can't all. use the Imperium keyword. Mm-hmm. To create your battle forged army, so like you can't take. Well, I guess in a detachment, not an army. So, no, I guess you can. So you could take two units. So you could take a space marine, take sisters. You can take this. Okay, so that's actually kind of interesting. Yeah, and then that tech yeah. marine becomes kind of useful that so you can bounce them around. That strategy makes me interested. Well, because- you can only bounce around the the tech priest dude. He's the only guy that can teleport. I mean, yeah. they can all teleport, and then he can. Well, yeah, no, yeah, no, like actually. That one yeah. strategy makes these guys kind of interesting. All yeah. these little cheap dudes in a patrol detachment. Mm-hmm. One CP, every single one of them deep strikes. Mm-hmm. Right? Now, as long as your power level and your max units doesn't exceed your, your board people, I imagine the power levels are all really low on these guys. I would hope so. Um, that's actually interesting. I'm with these guys. I, I feel like it's I feel like this play there. Like three, four. All my level. garbage people will show up later when they need to. Got it. One CP. Not as soon as get it killing. Infantry. Well, and that the tech priest or whatever the the uh, the tech priest he can repair. It's not just Star Strider stuff, I would assume, right? Uh, it's not. It's not a tech priest in the the literal sense. Sorry, oh, it's like oh. some hybrid. Okay, mechanicus dude. It's he does like have an tech explorer in the in the RPG. What's that? It's like an explorer in the RPG. He, uh, it, there's something called a Electro Master. Oh, I don't know what that is. No. Um, yeah. I, I well, um. I mean, you could probably He's even take a, You could probably take a little Vanguard attachment or some shit. These guys mm-hmm. are elites and stuff, right? Yeah, you got an HQ, you got a lead, got some troops. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm with getting all these. How many points for these groups to be in a guys patrol? So I got a patrol attached. You gotta take the leader. Um, you have to take which ones are the troops? The guy who with the guys with the roto cannon and the shotguns? Yeah, and the void master. But you but see, this is the weird part, because hold up. You can only take one of this unit. In your army. What? Yeah, of the, the one troop choice in here, you can only take one in your army. It says that? It says that. Uh, so, like, you can't even make a patrol. Everything. How many of the elite people are in there? Oh, uh, there's a bunch. I guess we're making an outrider detachment? Yeah, I guess so. Can't take a patrol. So, are those things zero to one? No. No, yeah, they are. 
Well, Where? one of each. Yeah, one of each. It says you can only take one. Yep. Yep. I see the disappointment on your face. I feel like we did a whole lot of talking for you. Actually, can't play these in 40k. Got it. Yeah, and some folks in the chat are saying it feels like these guys were designed when Imperial Soup. No, you can was take you can take a patrol, right? Because the patrol is only one troop, right? Like Wolfstar said, you can take a so yeah. All you can do is take a patrol detachment. Mm-hmm. Like so, you can take so basically. Well, so what? The elite, the vanguard. How many you need? You need three, three for everything else. Well, you'd have to. You could take one of each. You could take one. Well, you, you just s- can't duplicate. You, well, you can take. Yeah, I mean, you can take practically. You could take any of these little shitty. You could take a little detachment, shitty little detachment. Um. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I thought a patrol was, it was two age. It was two troops. I did too. That's a uh, brigade. No, that is nothing. A battalion. Battalion is three. So um. That is, you can shove all of these into a little detachment and take it all deep strike. I think that's good. I think that works. I think that is playable for less than a hundred points. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's not. It's not overwhelming, and it's a nice little bonus to box set. The miniatures look dope. You get good content. If you're in the Rogue Trader, you and a buddy can now jump back into it. It's kind of like the starter for 130. Uh, you just won't get a lot of terrain. And you're going to get that, that new play style where they're playing on the ship. So it's a little bit close, more co- close quartery kind of style. Yeah. Um, like I mean, I don't even think it's terrible. I think that for one CP... Being able to just have like a bunch of Elijah and drop troops that are a bunch of little, they, they might be scrubs and they can't do much, but th- so much of the game is grabbing objectives and mm-hmm. behind enemy lines and recon. Like, I can see this being a really, like, I tell people all the time, is like, if you have something to get in the backfield that you don't, that doesn't actually kill anything, that's like a behind enemy lines or that's a recon. Like, you tell me you can get like a hundred points of just like fucking, or maybe like 150 points of just like, five things that you can show up during the game and places you need to. That's actually strong. I, th- I think this is playable for in terms of objective grabbing. Yeah. And just popping up and being a nuisance. Yeah. That, yeah, exactly. Wolf Sark. That I wouldn't do a patrol detachment. I would do what Wolf Sark said. I would take one of each assassin tech priest medic. I'd make yeah. it. I would definitely make it uh the Vanguard attachment, and I would definitely get the one free CP and just say, fuck it, let's just drop. I think you can bring them in wherever. They don't have to be. The deep, I mean, if they did the normal deep strike rules, it's anywhere nine inches away from an enemy and turn two. Yeah. You, you know, and, uh, because deployment. you got, you know, one dude's an elite choice, one dude's an elite choice, four dudes are a troop. You can just, boop, just, hey, oh, here, here, over here, here. All right? troops, KR Quinn, all troops are objective secure. Right now, based on the chapter approved last year, and I'm that sure these true. guys, if these guys are like any other book, they probably have something saying that in there. They too. Don't. Well, then chapter approved takes precedent. Yeah, what role is the uh, assassin, the the medic? Are too? they? Are elites. they elites? They're, They're elites. all elites, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. I think actually I'd be I'd be I'd be interested in sitting down with that little book and figuring out how to inject it into my not try hard list because you're gonna be sacrificing one of your three detachments. So you know what else is really good? It's three slam captains and supreme command attachment that also deep strike <laughs> for no CPs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't you can't split them up when they deep strike though, because if if you have the rogue trader in there, which you would have to, because you need the HQ choice, you cannot set up any units with this ability before the rogue trader. When you set up Lucia Vane during deployment, all units with this ability are set up at the same time. When you set her up on for the first time, all units with this ability must be set up within six inches of her. Oh my god! All right, never mind. We did so much talking. <laughs> Sorry, because guys. they all have the road trader retinue. Was trying to get, su- trying to get super excited about this, and it's just so many I, 
every cool little thing we figure out, it's like there's a rule in there. They're like, no, you can't do that. You can't optimize it the way you want to optimize it. You can't take a battalion. You can't. Oh, my God. <sighs> yeah, it's savage. These are not tight. Wolfstark, do you see something that I don't see? He's usually always looking at these rules for me. <laughs> He's in the chat. I, I'm just. Very underwhelmed by these. I am super underwhelmed. Not going to lie. I'm going to pick up the box for the models. The models look dope. RPG. Like. Hundred yeah. percent models look dope. Like I got no beef with the models. I'm I thinking, mean, type, people are people are chiming in saying, "Hey, you know, this seems like it was designed before the rules changed." Well, it was. GW has an eighteen month cycle from start to finish on a project. That's why they've already started showing us sisters since March. So we're not going to see sisters of battle until like towards the hot towards this time next year. Actually, hit shelves. That hurts like, me. So 18 months ago, they were working on this. Before 40K even came out, 8th edition, they were already working on Kill Team. When Armageddon hit, Shadows, Shadow War Armageddon, they were already working on Kill Team for the new edition. Think about that for a minute. Yeah, that makes sense. No, when Wolf's like, that's the, immediately what I gravitated toward. I was like, there's, there's some sneaky mortal wound, and, every, and you can get models wholly within her mm-hmm. five plus plus. Like I was like, oh, that's cool. Like that's interesting. That's part. I mean, that's that's a useful forty five point character. Like she's useful. Some of these elements are useful, but I just can't figure out a way that would I would ever play these at a tournament. Like speaking only of tournaments, why would I play these? I don't know. Like yeah, no, and I agree. Like I'm, I have no problem with them not being ridiculously good. Like they're fun. The models are sick. I might find uh, counts as opportunities, assuming GW doesn't not let me play in tournaments if I use their own models to count as other models. Um, they they look good. They're fun. Well, I guess it's a. I just don't feel like I got my hobby fix off of that though. You know, is it weird? Mm-mm. No, I didn't either. I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah, I don't like, know what it is. <laughs> everything else about this kit is great, except the 40k rules part. I mean, I don't know about the kill team rules. I didn't really look at it, but it comes with a ton. It comes with a ton of content, you know. So, yeah, well, sorry, it's like using a kill team, be happy. Yeah, that's like that's where we're check. at. Check, check, check. But I'm not happy playing kill team, so I don't like. I like playing with hundreds of models, <laughs> so I'll never be happy. Well, sorry. There's so many hobbies inside of this hobby. It's too much. It's too much. But not to be negative about it. Models uh, allegedly are fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, the narrative is ironclad. <laughs> right? No plot holes. Not a one. Super strong. <laughs> Anything else to talk about tonight? I got nothing, man. Uh, we may on the spiky bit side of things, we may be offline on Twitch next week because of power outages and hurricanes and such. But uh, hopefully, we'll get back on and uh, join you guys next week for the podcast for sure. Yep. And you guys can check out my new podcast about storytelling called Quantum Froth Dispatches. And you can actually go to quantumfrothdispatches.com and it'll take you to the Libsyn page. And you can listen to the first couple episodes. We have an author interview and then tell you, essentially, we start to break down the 1982 version of Conan the Barbarian. And it's the, that's our season one is, is all about 1982 movies. Cause like every good movie came out in 1982 and they're all being remade now. Well, gee, I wonder why. Mm. <laughs> Gotta get that cheddar. Yeah. All right. Haspel, take us out of here. To hell with them fellas. Buzzards gotta eat, same as the worms. <laughs>